Hello and a very warm welcome to Worship on the Web with St Michael's Church in Braintree. During this prolonged period of lockdown, we're planning to make increasing use of Zoom video conferencing. Don't forget our very popular quiz, Saturday the 6th of February. Let, let me know if you'd like to join us for that and if you'd like to bring some guests along. But we're also planning with our services, as well as the online and services by phone, to have some live services, as it were, on Zoom. We're planning three of them during February. Details are on the notice sheet, and I'll be saying a bit more about them next week in the notices. But I want to start by showing you a trailer for Discipleship Explored, our Lent course this year. Discipleship Explored is a great course. There's some excellent talks and it's based on Paul's letter to the Philippians. It speaks of how as Christians we can respond more to God's love to us shown in Jesus. So we'll be running it as a whole church course on eight Wednesday evenings from 7.30pm. We start on Wednesday the 10th of February it will be on Zoom, but if you're not able to get on Zoom through a, a computer or laptop or a iPad or whatever, you can just phone in on a normal phone line uh, and I can send you details of that. It would be really helpful if you could let us know uh, by next Sunday, Sunday the 31st of January, if you'd like to join us for it, because there's a, a really helpful handbook that comes with the, the course and we'd like to order enough and get them out to you in time for the start of the course. So do please uh, email me if you'd like to at revnigeladams at gmail.com or, or give me a ring if you'd like to join us for Discipleship Explored. Well today we're continu continuing our series on the Sermon on the Mount and we've reached this great passage where Jesus taught his disciples and through them us the Lord's Prayer, a great pattern for how we can pray. We very much look forward to what John has to share with us later in the service. But as we begin, let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of prayer. Thank you that we can come to you at any time, in any place, and speak with you. Lord, thank you so much for the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us. And we pray that you would teach us new things about the gift of prayer today. Amen. Roger is kindly leading our service today. So let me hand over to Roger. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. God give you good day. That's an old English greeting, so much better than our current good morning, from which I guess it's, it's evolved. God give you good day. Recognises that everything we have, everything good and perfect, comes from the God who loves us and what a great God he is. And we're going to celebrate that in our first song this morning. 
It's the rousing to God be the glory. So as the words come up on the screen, whether you're standing or sitting, let's join together and sing this song, praising the God who loved us so much. He not only gave us creation, he gave us recreation in his son Jesus. To God be the glory. the signs of truly being a Christian that the Holy Spirit has made us new in Christ is that we want to please God. That pleasing God is not something we do unwillingly and grudgingly but it's our desire. But if we're honest we know we don't do that. We don't do that as we want to let alone as we should. The great news is as John tells us in his letter that if we confess our sins God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. So we're going to do that now together. The words will come up on the screen. So let's take the things we've done that we shouldn't have, thought we shouldn't have, said that we shouldn't have, and the things we haven't done that we should, to the God who forgives us for the sake of his Son. Lord, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing our next hymn. It's a hymn of invitation. Hear the call of the kingdom. And then Richard and Lorraine are going to lead us in our prayers. Helen will lead us in our Bible reading. And after that, it's over to John as he talks to us this morning. But for now, let's sing this rousing hymn, Hear the Call of the Kingdom, the Kingdom of God. Christ comes preaching the good news of the kingdom and calls us to follow him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to thank you for being your children and for all that you do in our lives, for all the opportunities and experiences you provide us. We thank you for all that you provide for us in our homes, our families and friends, our work, rest and play. Thank you, you Heavenly, Heavenly Father. Father. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning as sinners. We go wrong so often and need your guiding hand to lead us. Father, we are truly sorry for all the occasions that we have let you down, whether in the things we have thought, the words we have said, 
or the actions we have taken. Father, we pray for your forgiveness and we look towards your Son, our Saviour, Jesus, and think of the pain and suffering that he undertook on our behalf in order to bring us closer to you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that through your Son, Jesus, we are justified and made righteous in your sight. And we pray for your Holy Spirit to help and lead us along that righteous path to an everlasting peace with you. Forgive, Forgive us, us, Heavenly, Heavenly Father. Father. Heavenly Father, we bring before you our families and friends who are unwell or are grieving the loss of loved ones at this time. We particularly pray for those on the weekly notice sheet who need your healing and infilling of your Holy Spirit in their lives. We also pray for others known to us who need your healing in their lives and we pray that through our prayers and your healing that they may come to know you and love you in their lives. We also pray for those who have lost loved ones recently and in past years. We pray we will not forget their memories, but also that we will know your tender comfort, that they are with you in your loving embrace. Comfort, comfort and, and heal us, us Heavenly, Heavenly Father. Father. Heavenly Father, we pray for our church, archbishop, bishops and clergy. Mm -hmm and particularly Nigel and Joan. We pray that through your Holy Spirit they will lead us towards a closer and more righteous relationship with you. We pray for patience and perseverance in our lives as we fulfil your plan for us. We pray for our mission of the month, Crosslinks, and for work they do helping churches across the world to bring your hope and glory to new and old Christians alike. We particularly pray for those new Christians hearing your word and pray that it, it will fall on fertile ground and that they will have the love and support of fellow Christians around them. We pray for the persecuted church in Yemen. Please protect Christians and those who are seeking to find out about Jesus Christ and those who have, all, who have been newly converted to Jesus Christ. Please raise up new and gifted Christian leaders in that country. We also pray for the two courses that will be running over the coming weeks, the 321 and the Discipleship Explored courses. We pray your Holy Spirit will lead people to sign up to these courses and that this congregation will learn and grow through hearing and discussing your word. Lead, lead us, us, Heavenly, Heavenly Father. Father. Heavenly Father, we pray for our country, for our Queen, Prime Minister and Members of Parliament. We pray that they will govern and lead our country through your guiding Holy Spirit, that the decisions that make they make will be on the benefit of all the country. Guide, Guide them, them Heavenly, Heavenly Father. Father. Heavenly Father, we bring before you our world and for all the problems and issues that we face, whether it be wars, famines, economic failures, ecology and environmental problems, persecution of your faithful servants. We pray, Father, that those in power will do what is right for this world, for all mankind, as well as the environment around us. May we know your peace, humility and friendship throughout <coughs> the world. We also particularly pray for this country and the world as it fights against this pandemic. And we pray for your strength and guidance for all the doctors, nurses and other healthcare workers, the scientists, the leaders and the governments <coughs> and all who are affected and dealing with this devastating virus. Help us and, and lead us, us Heavenly Father. We, we ask all, all these things in, in the name, name of our friend and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. The Bible reading is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 to 15. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, 
for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, help us to listen to your word with understanding, to receive it with faith, and to obey it, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, my neighbour said, I'm not religious, but I do pray. earlier that I watched Joe Biden's inauguration as President of the United States and it struck me as how open they were to prayer, praying for him and for the country. Devout Jews did and still do consider prayer one of the most important aspects of life. There's a rabbinic saying that goes, he who prays within his house surrounds it with a wall that is stronger than iron. Prayer has to come from the heart. And there's another saying as well, that if prayer is seen as a duty or as a task, then it is no prayer. Prayer started off something beautiful for the Jews, the way to maintain a relationship with God, to worship him, to please him. In time, rules and regulations sprang up when to pray, where to pray. You know, only the temple or the synagogue would do to pray. And the problem was then that prayers became formulas. People went further. They prayed long prayers, lots of repetition and ostentation in order to be seen to be a good Jew. This comes in the couple of verses before the passage we read. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, that they may be seen by others. So Jesus told his disciples a better way to pray. The Lord's Prayer. Now surely that wouldn't become a meaningless formula. Well, I'm not so sure. Our Father who art in heaven. Yes. Uh, don't interrupt. I'm praying. But you called me. Called? I didn't call you. <laughs> I'm praying. Our Father who art in heaven. There. You did it again. Did what? Called me. You said our Father who art in heaven. 
Here I am. What's on your mind? Well, I didn't mean anything by it. <laughs> I was just saying my prayers. I always say the Lord's Prayer. It makes me feel good. <laughs> it's like I'm getting my duty done. <laughs> All right. Go on. Hallowed be thy name. Hold it. What do you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be thy name. Well, I, I mean? Me, oh, good grief. I don't know what it means. It's part of the prayer. What does it mean? It means honored, holy, wonderful. Well, I never knew what it meant. Well, that makes sense, hallow it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that, Mary? Sure. Why not? <laughs> what are you doing about it? Doing? Nothing. But, you know what? I think it'd be really neat if you had control of everything down here, like you do up there. <laughs> Have I got control of you, Mary? Well, I go to church. That isn't what I asked you. What about that habit of gossip you have? And your bad temper? You really have a problem there, you know. And then there's the way that you spend your money all on yourself. And what about the kind of books you read? Stop picking on me. I am just as good as any of those other phonies down at church. Excuse me. I thought you were praying for my will to be done. If that is to happen, it will have to start with the ones who are praying for it, like you, for example. All right. I guess I do have some bad hang-ups, <laughs> now that you mentioned it. I could probably name a few. So could I. <laughs> All right. I haven't thought about it in a while, but there are some things I'd like to change. I'd like to be a good person. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work on you, and I can have some victories that can truly be won. I'm proud of you, Mary. Uh, Lord, can we kind of wrap this up? <laughs> this is taking a little bit longer than it normally does. <laughs> Give us our daily bread. You need to cut down on the bread. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this? Criticize Mary Day? Here I am doing my religious duty. I'm saying my prayers, and you break in, and you remind me of all my hang-ups. Praying is a dangerous thing, Mary. You could wind up changed, you know. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. You called me, and here I am. It's too late to stop now. Keep on praying. I'm very interested in the next part of your prayer. I'm scared. Scared? Of what? Of what you're going to say. Try me and see. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those that sinned against us. What about Beth? I knew it. I knew you were going to bring up Beth. Why, she has told lies on me. She has cheated me out of money. I swore, Lord, I would get even with her. But your prayer, what about your prayer? I didn't mean it. Well, at least you're honest. But it's not much fun carrying around that load of bitterness inside, is it? No, but I'll feel better as soon as I get even. Boy, have I got some plans for old Bethy. She's going to wish she's never done me any harm. You won't feel any better. You'll feel worse, Mary. Revenge isn't sweet. Think of how unhappy you are already. But I can change all that. You can? Yes. How? Forgive Beth then I can forgive you. Then the hate and the sin will be Beth's problem, not yours. You may lose the money, but you'll settle your heart. I can't, Lord. I cannot forgive Beth. Then I can't forgive you. All right. As much as I want revenge for Beth, I want to be right with you, Lord. I forgive Beth. I really forgive Beth. 
Help her to find the right road, Lord. I think about her. I, I think she must be miserable. Help her to, to find her way in life with you. There now. How do you feel? Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Actually, actually, pretty good. Pretty great. Good. You're not through with your prayer. Go on. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Good. Good, I'll do that. Just don't put yourself in places where you can be tempted. What do you mean by that? Quit hanging around the wrong places, watching inappropriate movies and television, listening to sinful conversations. Change some of your friendships. Don't be fooled, Mary. They advertise they're having fun, but for you, it will be ruin. Don't use me for an escape hatch. But I don't understand that part. Sure you do. You've done it lots of times. You get caught in a bad situation, you get into trouble, and then you come running to me. Lord, help me out of this mess, and I promise you I'll never do it again. You remember some of those bargains you tried to make with me, Mary? Yes, Lord. I do, and I'm really ashamed. You know, up until now, all I thought I had to do was just say the Lord's Prayer, and then I could go on living my life the way I wanted to. I never expected all this to happen, Lord. Go ahead. Finish your prayer. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Do you know what would bring me glory, Mary? What would make me really happy? I want to know, Lord. I really, really do. Oh, Lord, I think now I'm beginning to understand what it means to be a follower of yours, Lord, to really, truly follow you. I love you, Lord. You just answered my question. I did? Yes. The one thing that would bring me glory is to have people like you truly love me. And I can see that happening between us. Now that some of these old sins are out of the way, and now that you and I are communicating, well, there's no telling what we can do together. Hey, Lord, you think, you think now, from now on, uh, maybe we could really really talk like this again. You think we yes, can do Mary. That? Let's really talk from now on. Well, there is someone who had a surprise communication. As the video said, prayer can be a dangerous thing. When we look at our Bible reading for today, in the parallel passage in Luke's Gospel, one of the disciples had said, Lord, teach us to pray. This was the norm for rabbis in those days. And so Jesus gave us, and him, a pattern for prayer. And although the Lord's Prayer is used on many occasions, many different settings, and all for all ages, it is actually a prayer for those, really, who are disciples, those who believe in our Lord Jesus. That's where Mary went wrong. She saw it as a duty, a formula, something to rattle off and ignore the consequences. We could spend a long time looking at every aspect and every implication for us as Christians. But I will attempt to be brief. It is a pattern for prayer, which I believe should underpin all our praying, not just saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, who are we coming to? Is God, it is God, our Creator, the Creator of all things, 
the all-powerful, the all-holy. If we see that first, then we should might get a beginning of the right perspective. We come to an awesome and holy God. Hallowed be your name. Biblically, name also means the nature of a person. And hallowed, holy, is to do with setting apart something special. We are acknowledging God's unique nature. We come to a great God and the prayer is one that brings the whole of our life, past, present and future, to Father, Son and Spirit. Your kingdom come. There are present and future aspects here. We pray that God may establish his kingdom here and now. We are members of his kingdom if we have turned to Jesus in faith. We pray that his will may be done. And we also look forward to when Jesus returns at the end of time and the kingdom is fully established with us forever. Give us today our daily bread. We're not looking for riches. We're not looking for great things. We're looking for things that are sufficient for the day. It is a reminder that we are dependent on God for everything. Not more than we need, but most of the time we do have more than enough. Forgive us our debts, where we have fallen short, where we have missed the mark. Yes, it includes sin, that is missing the mark. But it doesn't mean doing heinous acts. It just means not living up to God's standards. Each of us is in need of the forgiveness that comes about because of Jesus' death and resurrection. He died to restore our relationship with the Father. We in turn are called to have a forgiving attitude to others. At the end of the, the prayer, Jesus emphasises that, that if our hearts are hard, if we cannot forgive others, if we have resentments, then that becomes a stumbling block for his forgiveness. As Jesus has forgiven us, so we are called upon to forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We need the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit to fill us and guide us away from areas of temptation. If we remember in times of temptation that he is within us, should we ignore then the voice of conscience? So God is with us as we pray. Father, the creator and sustainer, Son, the Saviour and Redeemer. 
the Holy Spirit, comforter, guide and protector. May we, as we pray the prayer that our Saviour taught us, may we hear his voice. May we be open to hear him speak to us. Amen. Our final hymn reminds us that no matter what the state of the world is, or whatever the state of our own lives, however hard it may be, however lonely we may feel, however much of a struggle we have, we have a friend who will never let us go. A great and powerful friend. If you belong to Jesus Christ, if you put your faith in him, if he is your Lord and your Saviour, then you can sing, What a friend we have in Jesus. It's our final hymn, so again, whether you're standing or sitting, let's join together and celebrate the greatness and the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a friend we have in Jesus. and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often So as we come to the end of our time together this morning, a final prayer. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be majesty, glory, dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen.